What are you going to do after the kids are gone or after you retire, after like there's freedoms? Maybe you're taking care of an elderly parent or a relative who's sick, a family member who it has you tied down and you feel like your life isn't entirely your own. What do you do once it is your own? We're talking about that today here on The Shalene Show because it's a question that people have asked us a lot about, like, what did you do to be living the life that you're living now? Like, what do I need to do? Was it just the day that the kids graduated from high school where you're just like, okay, let's go, it's time to go. We had a lot of planning to do. Let's get to it. Welcome to this edition of The Shalene Show. Thanks for being here. I'm Shalene Johnson. I'm Brett Johnson. And we're going to break all that down for you today. We're going to break down like kind of what we did, what we had to look at, what we talked about, what we changed and share with you what worked for us. But I want to say this before we go too far. This is what we had in mind. So you can take our advice and you can tailor it for whatever it is you want your life to look like when you have, you've got more freedom, more autonomy, right? There's There are just seasons in life where and it might not just be kids, it might be something else, it might be a job, it might be an obligation to a family member, who knows what it is, but they, they, there are certain times where you just, you can't live your life, or maybe you can, but you've decided not to. I think when other people hear how other people have done it, they can, they're, they're smart enough to apply it to themselves because they're, they, you know, they're hearing parts of our story and they're gonna go, that's not what we have set up they might not own businesses or, or have a house they have to get rid of. And they'll be like, oh, but I see how this can apply or I see the steps that need to happen. Or I'm like, oh, this is going to happen in two or three years and I haven't even planned for it. So I need to get going. So I guess basically we, what we're trying to say is we're going to share exactly what we've done and what our lives look like today. And a lot of which you've seen like in social media and stuff. But that doesn't mean that yours has to look like this, but it does mean if you want something different you've got to think about it you've got to have a vision for it you got to plan on it and then you have to reverse engineer the plan so that's where i think we should probably start is we knew at some point our kids would probably be gone like the whole point of how you raise your kids <laughs> is that they let's hope have the autonomy and that they they become self-sufficient and that they can like live their own lives even though sometimes you don't want them to live their own life sometimes you want them to just like be obsessed with you but you know, that's not healthy, right? Yes. So there came a point where we both realized, and I think it starts to happen for us anyways when our kids were in high school, that we were like, oh, there's only so many years left. Yeah, I think it was probably um, when they both got to high school. So there's a three years age difference. And when they both finally got into high school, and it, it, it was weird because before that, things weren't as structured when you have like club sports and vacations and a couple different schedules. But once they got into high school, we kind of like knew the routine and we were able to kind of go, okay, this is going to end here in about four years. I will say, and I think this is kind of important, you know, when you're doing something hard, it's easier sometimes to get through hard stuff when you're thinking about like, oh, but there's going to be a reward at the end of this. Like if you're building a house, it's a real pain in the butt. And you're thinking to yourself like, this is so hard. I just want to quit. But then you, you keep thinking about like, ultimately what is this going to be for us like we're going to have our dream home and when you're raising kids you might be in a season where you're like this is never going to freaking end yes and i remember those I, I i mean we have family members that are in it right now like literally there's a couple steps behind us and you know hearing their stories that are going right now and you and you can hear like the overwhelmed like they're overwhelmed like they're stressed like it's just they have no time to do anything and you want them to be in that moment, but you also want to tell them like, it's going to go really quick. Yeah. And if you want to do something afterwards, like now's the time to start, like not like planning it to like the fullest, but like starting to lay the groundwork. Mm -hmm. We use that to get excited about the future. I think a lot of couples, especially when, you know, you're really devoted to your kids and super busy and you're, you know, going, going, going and it's sports, 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 or whatever it's activities and you don't have time for each other, and you certainly don't have time for your own personal pursuits, you can start to get almost resentful or you feel like you're missing out. And we would just tell ourselves and we would say to each other all the time, like, well, when the kids are gone, we're going to travel. Like, we did not travel. We did not travel. I mean, other than, you know, to see family and stuff. Our first 
venture out was 2019. So 2019. It was the first time we went and we outside planned, the country. And we had planned to go in 2020 and stuff happened. <laughs> yeah. But so. we, you know, we talked about like we knew that we were making certain sacrifices when our kids were little and, and our lives were just as crazy and busy as maybe yours are. And, and sometimes that like might be the case again, like not to just keep bringing up these other examples, but like maybe you're taking care of a parent right now and it's hard. Like caring for family members, having obligations when there's so much you want to do it's easy to start to feel resentment and it's easy to start to feel like this is my life forever. And you can make a decision, which we did like to start making like a bucket list of all the things we wanted to do. Yeah. I think, I think that really helped, you know, an an early date night, probably when the kids right before they entered high school, we were like, we're going to do some fun stuff when, you know, we raise our kids because that was our number one priority. So we, our number one priority Whereas to raise two good humans and get them out in the world and have them be self-sufficient. And then the next thing was, we're going to enjoy ourselves. But you have to have like, you have to have something to look forward to. If you don't have something you're looking forward to, you, you feel like your life is over. And that's when depression sets in. And that's when people just stop living. You have to have something that you're looking forward to. And the way to have something to look forward to is to visualize it, to think about it, to dream about it, to envision it, and, and to, to put on a bucket list. And that's like your reward. Anytime you transition into another season, it's also sad. You're grieving something that's over, right? Like maybe you're caring for a family member who you know at some point they're going to pass on, right? And that's a really horrible amount of grief to have to deal with. At the same time, you're like, but it's going to be a new season and it's going to be an evolution. And it's really sad when your kids leave the house. And I think too many times people, especially moms, I don't know if dads do this too, but you start focusing on that. Like, what am I going to be? Who am I going to be? What am I going to do? And you put all this guilt on your kids and then they become resentful of you because they just want to be humans and adults and they want to live their lives. And so I think if you can know it's going to be sad, but also have something to look forward to and to, to realize that it's a season and you have to grieve a little bit like what's over and it's never going to be the same anymore. I've done a whole episode on that. We'll link to it in the show notes about like, you know, like letting go of those seasons and what it's like to parent adult kids, right? But that was the first thing is like, we thought about all the things we wanted to do or like our bucket list. Yes. Once the kids are going to be gone. Like, okay, so then the next thing we did was we talked about what are the, specifically what are those things? And we said we wanted to live. We wanted to downside the home because the house didn't make any sense anymore with the two kids being gone. And we also wanted to live you specifically had a dream to live at the beach. Yeah, wanted to live on the beach. My, when the kids were growing up, like my dream, because I think he's always wanted to live on the beach and thought our kids would love it too, but I always wanted like space and I wanted a yard and I wanted a place where the kids could go outside and they could experience like being outside a lot. Like, I, I did not want the kids to grow up at the beach. I, I, I loved the place that, the, the, the two homes that we raised them and the final home was spectacular that we raised the two kids in. But I just knew like, didn't make any sense like that the house was too big it was just like i mean yes we could have stayed there but then then we would have been just staying in and running in the same place we wanted to move on we wanted to downsize and we wanted to downsize and move to the beach and get a smaller place with less like yard commitment and all that kind of stuff but also the beach is so different and the beach is something that like it's tough to do with kids Mm -hmm. at least for us we felt like it was so that was like something that's like well it might not make sense to do that now but that's something we can look forward to later. We also knew we wanted to travel and we didn't specifically know what we just wanted. And we thought like, even like, would it be interesting to like live in New York for a little while or, or maybe live in Maui? I remember us talking. Yeah. Because we had never really, you know, we had, we had vacation when we get a chance with the kids spring break and such to go over to Maui. But we weren't international travelers. Neither one of us, well, she had gone on like a trip when she was in high school or something. And I'm I don't know sure. if that counts. Yeah, but we've never really vacationed in Europe. And really, until just a few years ago, we really didn't even talk about it or really like get excited about it until we started like, 
you know, talking to friends that have gone and them saying, it's just amazing. It's just different culture and all this. Kind of, then we started looking into it. And then that sparked our interest. And that was like another thing to put on the list. Like, okay, we want to move to the beach. We want to travel Europe. Mm -hmm. So the first thing I want to say is like, we didn't like sit down one day and be like, all right, let's plan our future. It was just a, a habit that we started getting into about talking about like delayed gratification. Oh, delayed. So we started focusing on like delayed gratification, like things that we wanted to be gratified with, but like we knew we could have it later. And we started talking about that. So that would be step one is like, just start talking about it a lot. Like I'm look, so looking forward to, I'm looking forward, I'm looking forward, I'm looking forward. That's number one. Number two is then be specific. So we were specific about beach. We were also very specific about the fact that we, like I know so many people who they get in the best shape of their lives as they're entering into menopause, because they realize like now I've got all this time for me because that usually coincides with the time when your kids are leaving. And so, you know, be careful about the story that you tell yourself. And I'm not saying that like everyone's menopause is going to, they're going to be in the best shape of their lives. But I'm just saying like you might be able to spend a lot more time on you because you've got more time. We knew we wanted to be healthy. We had lots of friends and seen other people who like after their kids left, they gained 30 pounds. They started drinking all the time and just didn't do anything but like party and stay home and-, and Wait for the kids to come home. Yeah. <laughs> and we're like, we definitely, we don't want that. Like, and you know, I'm not saying it just wasn't right for us. Like if that's- That's what you want to do. If that's on your bucket it. list, go for it. Yeah. Like maybe you've been, maybe maybe you've you've been, been sober since, yeah. since you had your kids and you're like, man, when those kids are out here, we are drinking vodka straight every night. Yeah, and maybe you had kids that whatever their activity was, whether it was a sport or, you know, they were dancing or they were acting or whatever it was, had you running around ragged all the time, driving around, traveling, going out of state and all that kind of stuff, you might, your dream might be like, I just want to chill. I just want to be at home for a couple of years where I don't have to worry about going someplace. I just want to enjoy my home and my hometown and like do things around here. Or start your business. Like today I was asking on Instagram, you know, what what is it you have a dream of, right? And one of the people that responded was like, I would love to have my own business and, you know, really like have my own thing. But right now I'm very focused on my kids. Yeah. That's a perfect example of something you should be looking forward to and kind of thinking like, what do I need to make happen? What do I need to do or what do I need to start to learn so I can look forward to this in the future. I, I saw something on, on the news the other day of how many people have their wealth. And I'm not saying like, this is when you, you know, your kids are gone. Now you're going to become wealthy, but mm -hmm. there are so many people that have created their, their wealth in their sixties and seventies. And it's probably, I don't, I, it's probably people who had lots of boys and boys will eat you out of house and home. Yeah. So they probably just, you know, that, that, that is true. There, you know, and I, I think it's important, like, we didn't decide today to record this to help those of you who are about to be empty nesters, per se, because I think, like, we could do a whole nother podcast on that, because there are a lot of things you, you should start thinking about that you're looking forward to, and there's lots of benefits to being alone together, but you got to think about it before it happens, because if it just suddenly happens, then it's just the two of you, and you're disconnected. You have you live separate lives and you haven't talked about your vision for this season of your life. And, there, you know, there's going to be more seasons after this, too. Like, I anticipate that we're going to have another season once one of our kids starts having kids. Well, a lot of times you have a season of the, your children possibly getting married. And mm -hmm. we had that season last year in 30 days. So both yeah. kids get married in 30 days. So that season was really fast. <laughs> it was like... Yeah, but I, I think we have ideas of... We have already decided, like, if our kids need us once they have kids, that's going to change things again. So we also kind of knew that this could be a short window where we're able to go crazy and just like, you know, act like we're, you know, newly dating again and just do all the things that we want to do and, you know, go out and have fun and travel and do crazy things. We don't necessarily think we're going to be doing this for the rest of our lives. No. It'll probably happen in seasons. Yeah. Okay. But we did decide that once the kids were gone, we wanted to travel. We wanted to have a lot more flexibility than what we currently had. We also knew we wanted to live at the beach, at least part-time, and we wanted to experience living in other cities, 
possibly other countries, experiencing other cultures, other people, you know, all kinds of things. So those are things we want to do. So then your third step, if I am keeping these numbered, I don't know if I am or if you, no. you're the guy that's good at numbers. But anyways, the next step, let's just say that, is you've got to look at like, okay, this is what we want to do once we're free. What's currently standing in our way? And the th what obligations? That's right. And so I, I've got some notes just to help us remember. So for example, I was teaching classes locally. You were... I was coaching a high school football team. Mm-hmm. So those were things that had us, you know, feeling obligated to other people. So we knew slowly we needed, we didn't want to just go like, oh, the kids are gone and then give those things up. That felt very abrupt. We started making these gradual changes before the kids were gone. So that would be my recommendation to you. And I think that makes it so much easier to transition. If you start doing these things slowly, I gave up my teaching classes. I stopped coaching. Yep. And that didn't mean he was done with football. He was still like- I actually stopped coaching privately and then I- gave up coaching high school. So I did those two things in, in phases because I knew I didn't want to do those things after the kids were gone. Yeah. And we also, what other things we have to do? Um, we had to figure out our business. We had to figure out how to, like who are the right people for us to move into this next season with and what was that going to look like and what kind of businesses we wanted to keep mm -hmm. and which ones we wanted to like, like either get rid of or kind of push off to maybe an agency or something like that, where it wasn't so reliant on us day to day. Yeah, so that we didn't feel like we had to be in an office managing an in-person team. So we really started transitioning and that takes several years. I mean, this in, in general took about a, I would say anywhere from three to five year plan. I would say, I wouldn't even put the word three. I would say it was at least five. Yeah, well, I mean, if you think like everything, but yeah. we, but like the things that really freed us probably took less than three years. But we started transitioning, right? Like when we started thinking about it and the other piece to our lifestyle was we had to kind of like release ourselves from that area. Like we had properties, we had a lot of, you know, personal responsibilities and obligations. There's things that you volunteer for, there's things that you become involved in. And so we stopped doing that. We stopped like putting ourselves out there and obligating ourselves locally. This means partnerships like maybe this means that you know you've got a promotion that's coming up that would keep you handcuffed to a certain area if you want to travel that's hard to do if you're handcuffed to a specific location you sign a deal where you have to be in a certain location but you also want to travel those two things aren't going to work i know this is, might be very specific but we also stopped getting pets like that's a big deal like pets for us were like our life you know and so we had like two birds a bunny four dogs like we had a lot of animals at one point and i think the last time we got an animal would be monkey monkey monkey's the last of the mohicans yeah she's, she's the one that's left so we also made a commitment to each other we're like no more dogs right because like that that's a family member and we knew that it would be difficult for us to travel and to just like pick up and go and you know do all the things that we wanted to do so i just pet them <laughs> i just see a dog and i just pet them the world is brett's yeah. puppy like everywhere this man like must stop for all puppies but that's kind of a big deal yeah i know so many people that they put their lives on hold because of an animal yeah. or or multiple animals and so think about that if you, you want to travel and you want to do a bunch of things and your child, your last child before you are an empty nester is a freshman in high school, you don't go buy a golden retriever puppy unless you want to travel with a golden retriever puppy and it's going to handcuff. You just won't. You, you, you will be limited. You can't get up and go. You yeah. just can't get up and go. And we're getting and going and taking off and we just spent a bunch of time in Europe, but we're fortunate we have a family member that needs a pet, <laughs> you know, it's like- So she takes care of monkey for she us. She takes care of monkey for us. So. But it's also that I don't know that we would ever ask anyone to do that if it were a big dog. Yeah, I know, big dogs are different. You know, so we kind of got lucky there. The other thing that we had to do is look at, okay, what is it we want to do and how much money is that going to require? So yes, we could have done that working the way that we were working, but we decided we wanted to make a lot more money, but have a lot more flexibility. So it meant uh, learning new skills. It meant, you know, for the last, gosh, more than five years, 
Brett's sole focus. Focus has been trying to take what we have earned, the partnerships, the the businesses, the money that we've accrued, 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 properties, whatever we've sold, and make that money last as long as possible, grow it, put it into places, diversify it so that we have so, so many different multiple streams of income coming in that we can do this. Like we won't feel like there's pressure that we have to do. We have to take this deal or we have to do this work thing in order for us to be able to pay bills and pay our employees and pay our contractors and all that kind of stuff. So consciously start putting money in places where we can have it grow. And compound. So the next tip that we have for you, and this is really, really important. If you want freedom, freedom does require money. It just does. We're not talking about like doing luxurious things. We're just saying to have the ability to say like, I don't want to do that. And I do want to do this, or I want to go there. I want my life to look like this. That does require money. And I hear every single day, and you do too, from people saying like, I just have to figure out how to save more. No, here's what you need to do. You need to get financial literacy. If you want your next season, whatever that looks like, to have more freedom, then you need to start with financial literacy. And it's a skill. It's knowledge. And no one's born with this knowledge. They don't teach it in school either. No, they absolutely don't. So if you didn't have a parent that was financially literate, and taught you these things. They didn't teach you it in school. They didn't teach you it in college. And, you know, unless you're a financial advisor, you have literally, you, there's 90% of the population is just walking out with not knowing what to do with their money. Or they've been brainwashed by a parent who they thought had financial literacy and they've hammered into your head things like you need to buy a home and you need to save. You more. need to put money in a bank in a savings account at 0% interest. And that's just like, it's just stupid. It's dumb. It's like, that's not, Say it. it's, 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 we are not in that era anymore. And it's not the American dream to own a home. It's no. not, it's sometimes, it's the dumbest thing that you can do no. is sometimes to stick two or $300,000, you know, into some home that isn't going to make you any money where you could rent, invest, make money. It's all up to you. I'm not saying you shouldn't buy a home. I'm just saying that there are other alternatives. Yeah. And don't stop yourself with the obstacle of like, I don't even know where to begin to understand this stuff. Like, you know, Brett started by just watching all of the shows on TV that focus on financial programming. Yeah. Just basically, just basically listening to podcasts that talk about investing in money. And it's not that hard. And then you started reading books. And, and then started we, reading books. We both then- just got really intrigued by like, and, and kind of having to deprogram the things that all of us of a certain age, I think, have been conditioned to believe. And then just telling ourselves like, wait a second, we've got two options. We can work harder to make more money or we can make our money work harder for us. And I think the difference between that, you know, that kind of like stuck mindset and people who like really struggle and are, are always worrying about money, the biggest difference is you have to understand that money doesn't have any power over you. And in order to do that, you've got to really understand finances, what it takes, what are smart decisions. And, you know, one of the books that I talked about recently is I Can Make You Rich by Ramit Sethi. Actually, I didn't talk about the book. I talked about that Netflix series, which was really good. He's like a, a just a perfect person to start with. You know, I think another perfect person to start with is a perfect place for me to plug you. Brett has a course called Money Matters. And it's not an investing course. It's literally a course to teach you financial literacy. Yes. So how, do you like, get, how do you get out of debt? Like how to start a budget? What percentage of your income should be investing and stuff? There's so many stories out there and people will go, well, I just can't save and I can't do this. It's because you've, you're you making bad decisions. Mm-hmm. Because I've read stories before. I, I read a story in a book a couple of weeks ago where a janitor mm-hmm. at an elementary school, he never made more than $55,000 in his whole life in one year. Never more than $55,000. So he probably started it, you know, he worked as this janitor for 50 years at this school. He retired and he was worth like two and a half, three million dollars $3 because he knew exactly how much he needed to invest. And he just, it just took years and he just compounded over and over and over again. And he's set. So you don't have to have like this crazy, you know, multi six figure income to start investing because it's small. It's just like anything else. It's literally... It's like fitness. You're not going to go to the gym tomorrow and do a full body circuit and then the next day wake up and look like 
you know, you you should be on this cover of swimsuit, you know, magazine or something like that, right? It takes time. It's just like anything else. Like you you go to the gym you, over and over and over again, and finally you start to get to see some results. Yeah. You invest over and over and over and over again, and then suddenly after a year or two, you're like, wow, that's in, that's crazy. Yeah. That's how it works. How it works. And it is crazy. And, you know, we hear from people all the time who either you've mentored personally or they've been through one of your courses or they've just really taken it to heart that you've got to work on your own financial literacy. And they're like, it's just been a game changer. Like, But there were a lot of beliefs that we held that we had to change those beliefs in the face of evidence, right? So I would say that's a critical step. Everything that we're talking about relates to freedom. And money, it's not necessarily going to make everybody happy. I, I'm not saying that. I'm just saying, but it gives you a lot more options and things. options are freedom. Yep. If you want to do things, have options, have freedom, be able to do things in later in life, it's going to require money. My final step that I would say is that we started prioritizing what we needed. Like, okay, we looked at the obstacles. Okay. What are the things that are standing in our way? And how do we create a plan to reverse engineer ourselves out of those problems? Like, how do we overcome these obstacles? So we started doing that. That was a like, okay, what do we have to undo? And then we started focusing on like, what do we need to start doing more of so that our lives look the way that we want them to look? And so, you know, I knew that we, I would be entering menopause. I knew that- um, I knew that I would not be. <laughs> but we, all, we knew we wanted to be like healthy and fit. And so that we could take very active vacations, so that we could enjoy each other, so that we would be physically connected, spiritually connected, like connected emotionally. And so, you know, I started reading books about parenting adult kids. I started reading books about, you know, reconnecting and, and having a better sex life at midlife. I started reading, you know, books about like emotional intelligence and emotional connection between your partner and we started putting the I read the books and then I download them into him or like I buy the books on audible and then we'd ride in a car and I make him listen to them with me and we started like putting those things into practice not like all at once but like over the last four or five years and that helped us to become much closer it also helped us to realize like so many things we had to undo about being in one place, right? So what we envisioned for the season was to be a little bit nomadic. That was scary at first. Cause I'm like, yeah. what would that mean if I don't, if I can't go to the same gym every single day? Yeah. And you are also a, an introvert. So to have a space that you could hide every house that we've ever had, there's, there's places in there that you, you could go get away from everybody. Uh -huh. And when you are traveling, like we have been and what we designed is sometimes that space isn't, you know, yep. isn't big enough for that. So, you know, to know that it's like, it's okay because, because if, when you know your partner as well as I know Shalene, I know she needs that kind of like free time. So there was, there's been many times when we've been traveling and I know that the, the, the room is not great for like an introvert. Like I just leave yeah. and, you know, I just go do something, you know, I go down to the lobby or I go for a walk or whatever it is, or I might, we might do separate gym time so that we get some some alone time because I mean that's important too. So I guess the message there is, you know, you have your own hangups and insecurities and beliefs that might limit your potential to live this life that you want to live, right? And so I had to work on some of those things for myself. Like I had to I had to like heal my relationship with exercise and food where I, I didn't need so much control over like, I have to be at a certain gym at eat a certain time. I had to learn how to make new friends. And I read this book called Tell Yourself a Better Lie. And really, it applies to anyone who you say these things about yourself, like, I'm shy, I'm insecure, I'm introverted, I'm extroverted, you know, whatever the, the things you say to, and the way you define yourself, like the author says, basically, that's a lie. Like you, no one was born that way. So, you know, if that's a lie, then how about you just tell yourself a better lie? And so I started telling myself a better lie. I started telling myself, like, I actually like meeting new people. <laughs> and I actually like being around people 24-7. And, you know, when you start telling yourself those things, 
your subconscious starts to believe it. Yeah. You, you have done an amazing job. Like, it's crazy. Like, you have like a whole new group of friends in, in, in Miami and you're texting with them. And then we go to other places and, you know, made, making friends and stuff. So I'm doing better. Yeah. And it has, it was, but it was because you identified them. Yeah. Before, and you knew that they were going to be like, I didn't want to be the hang up. Yeah. And I, I think like I was worried too, like, you, you know, just like anything else, like we raised our family in this community and we had so much support, like from doctors because of the sports field and stuff like that and how long my family has been in this community. We, I mean, we had access to like all these people, like just like on our phones. And that was going to be one of the things where I was like, gosh, like when we're traveling, we're just not going to be able to call up Dr. So-and-so and say, Hey, I need this. Or like calling, like I need an adjustment or I, you know, like those things that you become like, so they make you feel safe. They make you feel safe. Yeah. They make you feel like, oh, if something happens to me, I can just go see so and so. Well, and it, for women too, it's like it's like our hairdresser yeah. and our best friend, and you know the place where I get coffee and the place where I get my nails done and the place where uh, you know all these things, Botox, and it's realizing like right now, like look at you can't tell, but my I I I've got more movement in my forehead than I have in like 15, 20 years. But I had to be like, that's okay. Like, there are things I can let go of. You just have to realize what it is you want and how it is you need to grow to make that possible. Yeah. Because growth is the most exhilarating thing you can possibly experience. And when we're done growing, like, life is over. Push yourself to experience new things. And ch yeah, and change is always a little uncomfortable, but like, like it gets kind of fun to, to feel that kind of like you're uncomfortable. I, I like it because like we go to a new place, we go to a new city. Like I, we, I've never lived in New York and we lived in New York for two months. Like I know the streets. I kind of like know where to how to get to places. Then we go to Miami and I like know the streets and know how to get over to, around in, in Miami. So it's like one of those things where like you, you really can change. You can really change, but your like your core like stuff is still is still in there. So like you yeah. figure things out. Like it's it's fun to like figure out new things in like a new city and how it operates and like what time to travel. I, I remember when we were in Miami, we had a gym that we want we love to go to, and like we went one time like at four o'clock in the afternoon, and we were like, like it usually took ten minutes to get to the gym, and I was like. It took like 40 minutes. I was like, no more working out at four o'clock. You, you know, so it's like. Wait, how does that relate to the story? Like you change, like you're, you're going to be oh. in a different city. <laughs> okay. You're going to be a different city. Like you're, you're out of your comfort zone. Yes. Well, I'm glad you brought up the whole thing about change because they do say that when it comes to brain development and cognition, like the people who live the longest, the people who have the strongest cognition and, and seem to be the youngest are the people who are not afraid to make these changes and to do new things and to try new things and to take on new skills and, and to experience new things when they're older. So I guess all of this to say, again, it wasn't like a sit down, let's plan it out. Like, what are we going to do in, in our next season? Yeah, we didn't get out of like a, you know a whiteboard and like put all this stuff down. It but just, we did like, have a vision for it, you know, and we, and we talked about it a lot and it, I guess this all stems to good communication and it's not, it's never too late. Like, I don't care how old you are and this could be something for couples and it might just be something for, for, for anyone who's like approaching a new season, just start visualizing what do you want for that new season? Get excited about it because yeah, a part of it is going to be anytime you leave something, it's going to be sad. But when you have something else to look forward to, including your growth, freedom, flexibility, just like doing things maybe that you've been dreaming about for a long time, that, that's pretty exciting. Hey, I hope you guys enjoyed this episode. If you did, please make sure to leave us a review. Tell us specifically what you enjoyed. And as always, double check to make sure that you're subscribed. For those of you who are watching on YouTube, thank you so much for double checking to make sure that you've subscribed to our YouTube channel. I release episodes, we release episodes on Wednesdays, on Fridays. He's here sometimes with me on Wednesdays. We also happen to have a Patreon together, so you can check that out at patreon.com forward slash The Shaleen Show. We've got two levels there. The Vault is with both of us. That's kind of rated R. <laughs> yeah, that's for <laughs> sure. Definitely needs some parental advisories. And then we have one called Between Friends, which is, uh, it's usually me, but you're there too sometimes. Every once in a while. Yeah. That one's PG. Yeah. 
But if you are watching here on YouTube, can you do me a favor? We are trying to increase the number, the percentage of you who are subscribed, but haven't yet turned on your notification. So you hit that little notification bell, right? Because my goal is to get to 5%. I just want 5% of you to have that little bell checked. And then that way you will be notified when we release a new episode. But just thank you for being here wherever it is that you are listening to The Shaleen Show. I appreciate you. Your time is the most valuable thing that you have. So thank you for honoring us by sharing a little bit of your time with us. I love you. I mean it. And I'll talk to you soon. See ya. See ya.